David Nana Igbo. I'm a Nigerian from the Igbo tribe. Amongst other things, I'm a lawyer and storyteller. Storytelling is an important part of um, my growth process. As, as, as a child, um, grew up in the 90s, I believe I saw the last um, few results of um, storytelling by people in Nigeria, mostly by my mother and my grandmother and uncles and elders in the village. So um, I saw that it was a means through which very complex things could be broken down. I thought if I could transfer that to my law practice, then it's to, um, it would be useful in breaking down very complex expectations of the law and human rights and international standards to things that um, people who are not lawyers would understand, things that would um, that will reverberate with, um, with them. Also, um, I learned from Chinua Chebe's book, There Was a Country, that um, it's important that we tell our stories. Uh, in telling our stories, we should start from things that people know and, rec and recognize and draw them into things that are unknown. I had my first draft of um, Femisilla Forever in 2014. I believe that if it was good enough, then there will be someone out there to take a risk on you and on your art. So I approached as many Nigerian publishers as I could and I kept hearing the same story. Um, but we can't do this now. It's, it's, it's a good work. Right? But for two reasons, you're a first time writer typically and also it's not, it won't be so helpful for our, our establishment to publish a gay novel in the heat of what's happening. Of course that was when um, the anti-gay laws just recently passed. Fortunately, um, Reverend Gene McCauley um, introduced me to um, John Russell Gordon who um, he said was interested, who may be interested in you know, publishing works of art of this theme. So I said, okay. I sent him um, 10 pages of um, Film Select Forever, the draft, and then he liked it and asked for the rest of the draft. And um, when he saw it, he said, if I was ready to work with him, walk and work with him, it's, it's, he sees it as something that would be a success. And yeah, we went, uh, we embarked on three years of um, rewriting Film Select Forever to what it is now. I think David's most attractive quality as a writer is probably um, he just has a really good sense of storytelling so the the book is full of intriguing mysteries really there's, there's a very strong almost gothic romantic undertone a bit like uh, Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca where you think oh there are family secrets there's a big theme of family secrets that gradually start to to trickle or break out and people who seem to have vanished from the characters' lives, reappear and um, cause alarm. Um, so I think as well as being a really contemporary novel about LGBT issues and the, the pressure and oppression of that law, um, it's also an intriguing family saga um, full of twists and turns and surprises. Um, from experience, I know that there's a big difference between writing legally and writing creatively. and having to juggle the two hearts almost on a daily basis. I implore more um, lawyers out there to explore writing and, um, because I think law is about advocacy and advocacy is nothing if you don't connect with people. And you can't connect with people when you're all formal and legalistic. Most of them think it's, think it's dry. I also think it's dry as a lawyer. So um, perhaps once in a while we step out um, the road, then wear our t-shirts and take our regular pens and go to the streets and write regular stories for people to understand. It's not up to you to change the world, but still, to not leave the world the same.